Hello everybody and welcome back to Bravs Gaming and more Democracy 3 Presidential Suite playing as Soviet Russia. Um, going on into, I think, year 8. Yes, okay, so we're going on into a new election now. That should be kind of fun. I wish I could say that this country is in a better state. I mean, it definitely is better than it was in my last election, I would say, but it's not, um, it's not been great. I mean, in the last video, we did have the Luddite riots fire. We were trying to avoid that, but, well, the industrial automation, just too strong. It turns out we had too many things working in our favor there, so, oops, that reduces my productivity a fair bit. That is going to suck. We also had the black market fire. Now, this one I think I know how to deal with, um, but it does really suck for us because not only does it increase crime, it reduces the amount of money that we're ultimately getting from our income tax, sales tax, and corporation tax. You can see it has a multiplier of 0.99, so 99% of what we typically would get. Not a lot, but of course, if it goes much higher, well, then obviously we lose out on a lot of money. On top of the flat 8 billion rubles lost, which 8 billion, it turns out, is pretty freaking substantial. So yeah, we need to deal with the black market. Um, kind of wish I had thought about that sooner, but oh well, I did not. And in the meantime, we still have to worry about that water shortage because, uh, well, food prices are going up, 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 up. And if this continues, we're in trouble. I'm really hoping this climate change adaption fund comes through for me because we are spending a crap ton of money. The sooner this is gone, the better, so I can reduce it down to something more manageable. In the meantime, though, We've made some progress in a lot of these events. Sexism is nearly gone. Not that that really benefits me that much. It actually is helpful to reduce liberals, but oh well. That is what it is. Uh, road accidents are quite low. Um, well, let's see. Alcohol abuse is going down. That's also costing me 4 billion rubles, so getting rid of this is pretty substantial as well. It's also, it actually says right here, making my uh, state healthcare services cost more. If I have another 15%, in fact. So if I wanted to look at my state healthcare services, which is... Cost me about 17 billion or so. I mean, you take 10% of that, it's about 1.7. You add a bit more. Let's say about, uh, let's say about 2.3. 2.3 billion on top of the 4 billion that it's costing me. So this is pretty expensive. Reducing our alcohol consumption to the point where this goes away will save me a ton of money. We also know that the teacher shortage is gradually going away. Stuff to help improve our education. That is actually probably the primary drag on our education right now. Yeah, it's definitely the dementia, uh, the teacher shortage. Dementia's not so good either, but. This one's a lot harder to deal with unless we get stem cell research, which we might want to do this video. I don't know yet. The liberals want me dead. Shocker. Ooh. We're actually looking pretty good right now. We're mostly in the green. Well, what do you freaking know? With the global economy in a recession to boot. GDP is going up. Unemployment, I would actually say this is about where I'd like it to stay. I would consider this to be a very comfortable amount of unemployment to try and max out uh, productivity and so on and reduce the odds of a labor shortage. Pretty good. Okay, hopefully then as health and education continue to go up, we will reap the benefits with a better GDP. That's what I'm really counting on at this point, so let's see what happens. Fetal disorder screening. Oh, this is an interesting ethical landmine. Our hospitals can now do a simple screening of fetuses for congenital disorders. With today's liberal abortion laws, a positive diagnosis might be a reason to terminate pregnancy. Disability organizations want to see this method outlawed. So we can allow the tests. Every pregnant woman should make rules for her own body and deserves the best information available for her choice. Okay, or we could ban the tests. This is not the same issue as abortion of an unknown fetus. When the screening is done, the fetus belongs to a patient group, and if we label people of some diagnoses unfit to live, we are down a slippery slope towards eugenics. Now, personally, I see this absolutely as a form of eugenics, or a very soft form of eugenics. Um, I, I think of this the same way that if I was reading, like, some kind of futuristic sci-fi novels. Like, what happens if we get to the point where we're so good at dis uh, determining this kind of stuff, this fetal screening, that, uh, what happens if, like, society says, it is illegal to bear a child that does have some sort of disability? I mean, I, I can totally see something like that happening someday, right? Don't you- you can hear the arguments already. It'll be something like, uh, uh, it would be- it would be, uh, irresponsible and, frankly, heartless to allow this pregnancy to continue, allow someone to be, be born with a crippling uh, disability that will put them at a disadvantage and reduce their quality of life forever. You know? Uh, you, you can hear those kind of arguments already being formed, and I would say that's very dangerous ethical territory because it's not that far of a jump to then apply it to other groups that are having a low quality of life. And it's like, well, the more loving, merciful thing to do will be to just let them die. I can, I've heard people make that argument, so I mean, it's a little bit of a personal issue for me there. 
But yeah, I can absolutely see that. I also really don't like this argument here, because it does sort of imply, once you've done this screening, we're now talking about the future body of somebody else. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you're pro-life, you believe that it is a separate human life, a separate body that deserves natural protect, natural rights and the, the right to life. The question to me really is, um, if it's not born, does it have natural rights yet? And the people on the pro-life side would say emphatically, yes. And the people on the pro-choice would say, no. Uh, and that's where I think that a big debate comes in. In this case, though, we have a situation where women are basically looking at, this is the potential body of somebody else. Whether it has rights or not, we'll, we'll leave that on the sideline for now. But this is going to be somebody else's life. I get to make a choice whether or not they get to live preemptively. It's not necessarily just about how it affects her body now. It goes a bit beyond that. You know what I mean? I don't know if I mean, this is a really difficult debate because I know that there are incredibly passionate uh, defenders of both sides here. So I'm trying, I'm trying to take this on a fairly neutral road and demonstrate that I understand a bit of both sides. I definitely see huge ethical yellow flags about this. I understand the other side of the argument though. I mean, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I see the other side of the argument that someone will be doomed to a lower quality of life. And not just the, not just the child, but also eventually the parents, probably, right? They're going to be taking care of this for a long time. So that's a very difficult ethical question. It's kind of a heart-wrenching issue because now we're kind of getting into the question as to whether or not some lives are worth living. And also, if quality of life is more important than the value of life itself. I do think it's very interesting from a kind of a sci-fi perspective, though. I mean, I've seen dystopian stories, you know, about like a future where this is actually exactly something. It will soon be a, a crime to bear a child with genetic disease, you know? It's an interesting idea. Do we allow it or do we ban it? Um, the thing is, I have no idea who's going to like this. I feel like this is... I don't know. I mean, banning the test, I feel like, might be something the religious... like. I'm trying to think of, like, normal abortion law here. Liberals would usually like abortion, and religious would not. Conservatives, too. I don't know. I, I think the fetal disorder screening, maybe this actually helps move us a little bit toward um, the homo superior event, though. Let's Let's allow it? I don't know. This should have thrown a bone to the liberals, right? No! What? You've got to be kidding me. I thought for sure that that was something the liberals were going to like. No, no, no. Well, then who... <laughs> who would it make happy then? Parents? No. Conservatives? No. Religious? No. Who did this make happy? What did this do? All it did is upset liberals. For allowing those tests, is this a socialist thing? No! How about environmentalists? No, I have no idea who this made happy. Youth? No. I have absolutely no idea. I have no idea who this just made happy with my decision. Alright! Looks like you should always ban it! Oh, okay, fine. Alright, so how are we looking as far as the water crisis? It is starting to go down. Will it be enough? That's a good question. I don't know. But it needs to be sometime soon because look at them food prices. <laughs> All right, let's try dealing with the black market first. It's relatively new. It should be r pretty easy, I would think. Pretty easy for me to deal with. And the thing I know deals with it is the fraud agency. It investigates internet crime, tax evasion, and black markets specifically. Now, of course, it's going to upset some people and also reduce tourism, but it does directly attack the black market by a surprising amount, actually. If we just wanted to do, like, a straight 550 million rubles, it would reduce the black market by about 30%, which I think by itself would be enough to get rid of the black market. Will it do so in the next four years? Probably not, but it might be enough to make some pretty significant impacts. Wealthy and self-employed, we don't have really any of those, so that doesn't matter. The tourism hit sucks. That, that does suck for my GDP. I, 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 not that we're relying on tourism, like, at all, but it would have been nice. Uh, foreign relations, where do we see tourism? Where is that? It's a thing, right? Wait, I would have thought that it was. Tourism? There you are. Oh, right, the camera icon. Oh yeah, we don't have any tourism to begin with, so it doesn't actually hurt us at all compared to where we are. It just means that we're never going to get tourism. Okay, well that's kind of fun. Um, so people are still trying to kill me. Good news is the Freedom League is going down a little bit right now. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that everyone pretty much loves me. Even the liberals who, as a liberal themselves, they should hate me. Most everyone it says hates me, and I've actually kind of wondered if this is, if this is more of an unintentional effect of the uh, electoral fraud. It's trying to make it so that everyone likes you in the sense that everyone has to vote for you, 
But I'm wondering if that actually has the side benefit of making everyone genuinely like you and therefore, no matter how much the other groups hate you, they're less likely to join a terrorist group. I don't know. Then again, we've also had a lot of people trying to kill me lately, so I mean... Pfft. What do I know? Alright, you know what we're gonna, we're gonna do? We're gonna impose a gun tax. I, I saw an option for it. I think that it improves security. Yes, gun taxes. We're gonna make taxes harder to obtain. That'll make it that much easier when I actually disarm the populace and ban all forms of guns so I can control all force. <laughs> no, but for real though, we're gonna do a gun tax. Uh, and let's make it relatively modest. I'll, I'll keep it kind of middle of the road. How about a flat 40%? A flat 40% gun tax actually reduces violent crime by about 12%, it says. It also reduces private security, which you might say, I want private security. It's considered a good event, quote-unquote. But, but, I don't like private security. I don't like private anything. I'm freaking communist. Well, socialist. Whatever. It also increases police brutality by virtue of existing, so... That's a fun thing. I don't know. We're not trying to get people self-employed as um as as private security guards we don't like that we don't like that at all so we'll, we'll tax the guns and help reduce that at least a little bit and you know what since we actually already were talking about disabilities and stuff children with disabilities let's go ahead and also pass the disability benefits this is something i wanted to do a while ago and i know that doing this would have actually helped reduce the veteran infirmity if we still had that event. Fortunately, we already got rid of it by superior health. But even so, this will go a long way to improving our equality and hopefully bring back that egalitarian society that we covet so much. I'm honestly shocked that it was gone. We're still really high on the equality department. I mean, isn't like the start trigger right here? I thought so. I wonder if it got rebalanced in this mod pack, so you have to go like really high to get the egalitarian society. I'm not really sure, but it's entirely possible. Either way, I guess we do go move on to the next turn, though. Uh, another capitalist plot, okay. Credit rating downgraded, what? Of course, it's because my deficit is so sucky. Okay, well, now we're down to a double A. If I could improve the deficit and the debt a little bit, maybe we'd be okay. The good news is, for once, the GDP isn't plummeting. Also, education is still going up. By the way, I love this quote. This is a great quote. The art of leadership is saying no, not saying yes. It is very easy to say yes. That is so true in modern politics. Don't you feel like uh, on both sides of the aisle where that'd be liberal, conservative, or maybe you're one of those uh, European nations that has more than two legitimate parties. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, feels like, it feels like it's just so easy for people to just kind of pander and be like, oh yes, we'll give you lower taxes. Oh yes, we'll give you more benefit programs. Oh yes, more welfare, more military, more blah, 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 blah. When, when do you see politicians saying, I'm sorry, no, we can't keep lowering taxes, we're having a debt crisis. No, we can't give you more uh, health care benefits, we're, we don't can't afford it. When do, you, when do you hear people saying no these days? I feel like never. It just never seems to happen. Alright, how's the water shortage? Still going down. We might actually be able to get rid of this by the time that the next election comes around. And if so, I think that almost instantly the food price crisis will start to go away. I don't think it resets back immediately, but it'll go down pretty darn quick. Pretty darn quick. Teacher shortage, still on its way down. If we could get rid of that, that's a huge boost to our education. Black markets, it's gonna take a little while for the fraud agency to take effect. But I think it only needs to be about 10%. So maybe in the next like two or three turns, we're gonna see this go away. And that would be great to try and rebalance the budget. And of course, getting rid of the water shortage means I will spend the political capital to reduce the climate change adaption fund and save myself a few million rubles which would be, uh, well, fantastic. <laughs> Alright, what do we want to do today? Um, you know what? Since we don't have anything else that's incredibly pressing right now, we're actually already reducing a lot of the things that we care the most about. Such as that teacher shortage. How about tooth decay? Tooth decay is still about to go away. Water shortage gonna go away. Don't think we're ever gonna get rid of the Luddite riots, to be honest. I think they're always going to be a thing, which sucks. This, I imagine, will go away. So if that's the case, then maybe now is the time to really start tackling uh, some of the big ticket items that we have been looking forward to. For example, I don't like the fact that liberal membership is still so high. It doesn't help that we're educating people better. The more we educate them, the more they want these natural human rights that we've talked about. What I could do is actually try to get rid of this whole local government thing. Also, I hate this. I hate this stupid surveillance scandal. I may have to get rid of CCTV cameras at some point. But we could do this. This is something I've wanted to do. Local government is currently being driven in no small part by decentralization because we actually do have a policy for it, which I don't like. Let's reduce that down to zero. Now this makes liberals a little happy for existing. Racial tension, uh, corruption will go up, farmers will be less happy. 
Patriot membership goes up, which actually could be good for me. We do like Patriots. But more importantly, the local government goes down by 18%. That will reduce the overall number of liberals, and I think that could be good for me. It also saves me a tiny bit of money. So let's go ahead and reduce that down to county councils. I guess that is to say that uh, local municipal governments can have minor influence over their county? Either way, I mean, I want to have absolute total control. This is more of an absolute monarchy than anything else, let's be honest, so... Okay, but that uses up almost all of my political capital, so let's go ahead and move on into the next turn. Hopefully without dying, of course, that would suck. Capitalist plot! Oh, no one's... Oh god, stupid surveillance... <laughs> gonna blow a gasket. Stupid surveillance scandal! You stupid policeman! <laughs> Why? Without a proper warrant. Okay, easy solution to the problem. No such thing as a warrant. Police can do whatever they want. There. Gosh, dang it. This hurts my foreign relations, it hurts my technology, and the liberalism membership goes back up again. God! And education, of course, going up isn't helping that. Alright, but the GDP is improving a little bit. In fact, we're almost, almost at the point where our deficit's gone, even though we are spending huge amounts of money on things like this. So that's pretty good. Interestingly enough, this actually takes forever to reduce the water shortage. Absolutely forever. But it is having an effect nonetheless. And that's good. That is good. Okay. What else can we do? Uh, big ticket items. Big ticket items. Uh, what if we did... I can't afford stem cell research yet. Okay, I want to do this this turn. This actually could be kind of fun. I know, I know. People are like, do the planned economy! I'm getting to it. It's expensive, and believe it or not, we're not going to gain almost anything out of this. We'll get to it eventually, though. What about stem cell research, though? This could be good. This could help, actually, if we do, the sooner we do this, the better, because it can help uh, reduce dementia. It also could lead to the whole homo superior event, which could be kind of fun. But it costs 45 political capital. We are currently generating uh, about 33 per turn. Why is this guy not happy? Socialists and trade unionists. Yeah, we haven't gone a long way to making trade unionists happier. Work visas, of course, was really bad for them. Oh, also killing their agents, now that that occurs to me. Yeah, that probably wasn't good. Actually, I wonder if we should change our labor laws. No, not yet, because I still need this productivity. Yes, eventually we should go toward a more pro-union thing, probably. But man, that hurts the working week and the productivity so much. Ugh, I don't know. We'll think about that. Something expensive, something good. Banning low MPG cars is good. It costs me practically nothing. Does cost a lot of political capital, but this should leave enough for me to do stem cell research next time. And yeah, we really do need to try and reduce our oil demand forcibly and car usage, it occurs to me. That's excellent, actually. Oh, this is really good. We can max this out. The only people it upsets are the motorists, but it does everything else we want. It makes environmentalists happy. It improves the environment by 11%. Reduces oil demand, which is good for our gas prices and our national exports. Reduces car usage, which is good for the traffic congestion. And reduces CO2 emissions, which is good for the average temperature and foreign relations. Actually, is that even true? CO2. Yeah, it does change the average temperature. Okay. That's what I thought. So yeah, that's actually good. Combat the global, global warming and stuff, and by virtue of trying to clamp down on CO2 emissions, everyone's a bit happier. So that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. So if we can try to reduce our car usage, which has climbed back up. I mean, we did kind of pass new car subsidies. I guess I, guess I should have expected more people to buy a car. But even so. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, good. We have 14 points left. That should be enough to get me to... The stem cell research. I'm not dead yet. That's good. Tooth decay is gone. Yes. Also, insemination of single women. Well, that's interesting. We've talked about this before. The technique of test tube babies has been used for years, but only provided to couples. Some single women who want to bear a child without a known father get support from liberals. Conservatives are skeptical, though. Um, I guess we might as well just continue upsetting the liberals, right? Yeah, we're not going to allow it. It's just, it's just wrong. We can't do that. No, no, we're not going to allow that. I actually did read an article not too long ago. In fact, I think today. Was it today or... No. Wait. Yes. Yes, actually, today I read an article exactly about this. Um, where they were having a scientific experiment where they actually were working on basically artificial wombs. Uh, in this particular case, for lambs. Right? Lambs that were born very prematurely and being able to put them in a bag of amniotic fluid with the right kind of tubes and stuff hooked up and actually help it grow up toward a more um, acceptable... Um... Uh, age, where it actually could survive, you know, almost like, it, like it's supposed to, it's no longer preemie. 
And I thought that was very interesting. It does bring up a lot of ethical concerns, as with many things, but it was very interesting to read about. And the idea that maybe that someday could very well apply to humans. I don't know. It's, uh, it, it is going to be interesting. It's medical technology, these guys. Man, it's just, oof, it is just crazy. Just crazy. Hey, look, we have a surplus. We haven't even gotten rid of this whole thing yet, and we've still got a surplus. Oh, that's good. Climate change. Yeah. Yeah, it's doing its thing. Water shortage. Oh, so close to gone. Not quite, though. And as we continue improving the environment, which we are doing, we're working quite hard to improving the environment, this is going to be gone. Okay. Give it a couple more turns, and I think we're done with that. Teacher shortage. Climbed back up. What? No. No. No, that's not allowed. How'd that come back? I think it's because my unemployment dropped. Hang on. Gosh dang it. I don't know yet. Parent membership. Mmm, still steadily going down. Birth control still more or less taking effect. I'm not really sure why that climbed back up, actually. I kind of assumed it was just the uh, unemployment, but maybe, maybe not. Ugh, either way, as it continues going down, our education is going to get better. Darn it, the alcohol abuse didn't solve. Crap, are you telling me that the only way I'm going to be able to solve this is if I actually change the alcohol law and actually ban everything? I hate the idea of doing that, but we may not have much of a choice. Especially as we continue to get a little bit wealthier, people are going to consume more alcohol. Yeah, as the GDP goes up, people consume more vodka. Wait, we don't have vodka, we have only beer. Never mind, point is though, that sucks, I want this gone. It's costing me so much money for existing. Dang it all the heck fire. Black market, okay, black market is going down. So give it a couple more turns, and I think this will go away at the same time as the water shortage, which is good. Luddite riots are not getting worse. Okay, sexism is actually about to go away. Uh, foreign subversion, still not so good. Mm, I don't think anything else really matters. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that stem cell research we were talking about. There you are, 45 points. Political capital. Costs a bit of money, but otherwise, the main thing that it does is it really upsets the religious... A little bit with the conservatives, but health goes up. Private health care going up is not so good, but we're going to ban it later, so it probably doesn't matter too much. But dementia, over the next 16 turns, will go down by 31%. This is probably the best way to try and get rid of dementia. I mean, yes, we could do prisoner ta tagging. Electronic prisoner tagging would work. Or we could try to make people more religious. But let's be honest, we only have 2.85% of the population religious. And very soon, very soon, in fact, maybe even right now... No, not right now. Maybe later, though. We'll probably go to, like, actual state atheism stuff, like the USSR actually was. But we'll see. Okay, uh, this is actually everything. Wow, we're going into the next election. This is not as short of a video as I thought it was going to be, but that's because I went on a ramble. Sorry, it happens. I like talking about ethics. I think ethical concerns are very interesting. Call me crazy. Yeah, but anyway. All right, let's move on. We're, we're, we're going to win. I mean, pfft. anyone want to anyone wanna take bets? Anyone want to take bets that I win this one? Oh, look, the opposition outspent me. What opposition? Find them, round them up, follow them to their home, and burn it to the ground. People actually are voting for someone else. That's illegal. Okay. I'm sensing, not to be too callous or insensitive to history, but I am sensing a great purge on the horizon. Seven million people, round them up. We know who they are now. All right. Mostly it was the capitalists, the self-employed, and surprisingly not the liberals who hated me. The liberals, really. The liberals have despised me and tried to kill me for forever. But because of this whole n everyone 92% of the vote thing, they still more or less voted for me. It's the capitalists who wouldn't. That's surprising to me. I expected this to be way worse. Self-employed was worse than liberals. What? All right, changes. Health, education, crime. I mean, across the board, this looks pretty good. Productivity's gone up, unemployment's down, CO2 emissions are a little worse, but otherwise, meh. Energy efficiency, that's good. Okay, so the rest of the world hates me, and they're not giving me as much trade as a result, but not by much. Now, our oil demand has gone down. Our oil supply has gone way down, though. That's not good. We want that oil supply to improve, but I'm hesitant to destroy the environment by uh, encouraging a lot of offshore drilling. We could do that, though. Look at the earnings. Even... What? No, 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 no. I have taxed the ever-loving crim cram out of the high earnings. How are they doing better than the middle class? The poor, I expected this. This, I expected. But what? GDP has gone up by 50% since we took office eight years ago. All right. Tobacco usage, traffic congestion, alcohol consumption, blah, 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 blah. Wages are up. Currency is stronger than ever. Temperature can't help that. Food price, water shortage, it'll go away. I mean, across the board, so far, we're looking really solid. 
Like, really solid. Yes, I know. They want me dead. Look at that GDP. It's going up, though. Ah! That's so good! Okay. Okay, we'll come back to all of this another time, I guess. Uh, typically, after eight years, this is where I would end my series, after a couple of terms. But we're not done yet. For those of you who are worried that I forgot about the whole communist thing, no, no, no. We haven't forgotten. We're going to continue. Okay? I'm going to go for another term, another four videos. We're going to do a few things. I hope. We're going to first off get a nuclear program going properly. We're going to pass a planned economy. We're going to take all the guns. We're going to do a bunch of communisty things. It's time. It is finally time. Now that the GDP has solidified enough that I feel like we actually have a surplus we can afford to start doing things like this, I think it's time to start going proper communist over the next four years. That's what we are going to do. Let me know in the comment section down below which policies, not just like general things to do, but specific policies you think make the most sense for trying to revitalize the USSR. I understand USSR, is it real communist or is it not? I don't know. I'm not getting into that, just if we're trying to recreate the USSR a bit closer, a modern version of it. What specifically would be good? Obviously, I think we need to do the planned economy. Obviously, I think that we need to uh, do a ban on religion, right? Or at least state atheism. That's necessary. Taking away all of the guns. Like, these are things that we should do. What else do you think we should do, guys? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy this video, then I ask that you hit that like button. Of course, subscribe if you have not already. My name is Promise, and I will see you guys next time.